Hi good people you are watching Lily's Rams our stories have been carefully researched using open source and archive materials our stories are based on true crimes and real people each episode is produced with the utmost respect to the victims their families and loved ones today we dive in on the story of Willie Kimani a Kenyan lawyer who was born on 21st April 1984. He was born to his parents Paul Kinuthia and Elizabeth Wamboy. Willie Kemani was married to Hannah Njiko with whom he had two children with. Willie Kemani was a Kenyan human rights lawyer who worked with the International Justice Mission IJM in Nairobi and a board member of Right Promotion Protection and also a member of the Law Society of Kenya LSK in recognition of his work Willie Kemani was named 2016 jurist of the year and awarded the post humas award for his bravery in defending the downtrodden in Kenya in 2017 Kemani was fitted with the Father John Anthony Kesa Human Rights Award by the Law Society of Kenya LSK for his fight for the rights of the oppressed. Kemani was a human rights activist and thrived in fighting for the rights of the people who are victims of police brutality and extrajudicial killings which were perpetrated by the police. Kemani was a defending motorbike taxi driver Mwenda who had accused policeman Frederick Lelyman of shooting him no reason at a traffic stop in 2015 Kemani Mwenda and their taxi driver were last seen on 23rd June 2016 at a police station their mutilated bodies were recovered 2 weeks later in a river almost 100 kilometers equivalent to 62 miles from the city during the judgment justice jesse lesit said evidence produced during the trial had shown that the murders were premeditated and the victims were brutally tortured and killed an autopsy conducted on Willie Kemani's body showed that he sustained 14 injuries to various parts of the body. The report added that his skull and genitals had been crushed and he died from blunt force a trauma to the head. Mwenda died from head, neck and chest injuries while Muirore had a rope tied around his neck and died from strangulation. Kemani Mwenda and Mirore were stuffed into the boot of a car for more than 3 hours as their killers debated whether to kill them or to spare them. They had been driven inside the boot of Lily Man's car to a nearby bush where they were to be executed. At around 10 p.m., Mwenda, who was the main target was killed. He was strangled to death using a rope. and nylon paper he was then removed from the boat of lily manska and placed on the ground and his body was put in a sack and put in kamenjo's boat the second victim muirore was picked from the boat and taken to a different corner from where mwenda was killed at 11 pm the driver was put into two sacks because he was tall the last victim willy kemani was He was killed almost immediately after the second victim. Ngoge, a witness, told the court that his job was to guard the three before handing them over to Mwangi, who took them to the killing area. Leliman and Kamenjo were waiting there and after killing, they put them in sacks in the boat. After all, the three were killed. Ngoge drove Lelimans car, which had two bodies while Kamenju drove the other one. Kamenju led the way as he knew the old new Sabuk area where the three were executed. He had previously worked there and would help dispose of the bodies. They took a rough road and got to a bridge where they stopped. 
they removed the bodies and threw them separately into the river. After disposing of the bodies, they drove back to Mlolongo at 4 a.m. where they ate at an Asian restaurant. Jesse Lesset also had that the chronology of events was carefully crafted several days leading to the murder. Hannah Kemani, who is Willie Kemani's widow, narrated that he, she had a premonition of his death a year before his murder alongside his driver and client. She said in 2015, a year before her husband's death, she got a premonition of his death and shared it with him. In her premonition, she had seen Willie lying on a metallic table. What was shocking was that he was already dead and people were crying. Hannah said she woke up and shared the dream with Willie who told her she needed to keep praying. One year later, on June 23rd, 2016, Willie prepares for work, leaves home, smartly dressed, full of life and never came back. When I was going to identify Willie's body at the morgue, I was carrying my last bone, she said. The three men were abducted while coming from a vocal low court where they were briefly held at Sukimau AP post before they were taken to a deserted field and strangled to death. The killers were police officers Frederick Ole Leliman, Stephen Cheburet, and Silva Wanjiko, who had been convicted and sentenced since. Kemani's body was found with wrists bound with ropes. Three of his fingers had been chopped off and his eyes appeared to have been gorged out. The judge singled out Leliman for acting in flagrant abuse of his office and masterminding the murder. He was sentenced to death by court, however... Kenya usually commuted death sentences to life in prison and has not carried any executions since 1987. The two serving police officers, Stephen Chebret and Sylvia Wanjiko, and their civilian informant, Peter Ngugi, were given prison sentences ranging from 20 to 30 years. The police say that they had taken action against any officer accused of brutality, while the Independent Policing Oversight Authority, IPOA, a body set up to probe cases of police brutality, investigates such cases and recommends them for prosecution. However, police authorities have been accused of running hate squads, targeting activists and lawyers investigating alleged rights abuses by police officers. In October, President William Ruto disbanded a feared 20-year-old police unit accused of extrajudicial killings and pledged on overhaul of the whole security sector. On February 3rd, 2023, the judgment was delivered and the court meted the sentences. Although Leliman would later be described as an honest, kind, and upright man, the careful plan and execution of Willie Kemani's murder painted him as a cold-hearted person. On July 22, 2022, six years later, Justice Lisset found that Leliman, Cheburet, Wanjiko, and Goge were guilty of the murder of Kemani, Mwenda, and Muiruri. The fourth police officer, Mwangi, was acquitted on all three accounts of murder. Justice Jesse Lesset said Leliman was the mastermind of the sophisticated murder, and she further said that the murder was most full with meticulous planning and execution. The bodies of the three men were found stashed in gunny bags in Oldonio Sabok, Machakos County, on July 1, 2016. They had been dumped in River Athi and were found more than a week after the men were reported missing. At the time of his death, lawyer Kimani was working for International Justice Mission, which helps investigate and document police killings and brutality. So, how did the man end up killing Willie Kimani and other two men on April 10, 2015 at about 2 p.m.? 
Josphat Mwenda was riding on a friend's motorcycle as a passenger in Syukimau, Machakos County. They were on a road near the Syukimau chief's camp when they were stopped by administration police officers dressed in civilian clothing. Though it's unclear what traffic offense they committed or what happened after the two were stopped, what is clear is that there was an altercation. And Mwenda was shot in the arm by one of the officers, Senior Sergeant Frederick Olelele Mann. The same police officer transported Mwenda to hospital and thereafter placed him in police custody. Three days after the shooting incidents happened, an injured Mwenda was charged at Mavoko Law Courts with three criminal counts including possession of narcotic drugs, gambling in a public place, and resisting arrest by a police officer. It later turned out that the charges were trumped up in order to cover up the fact that Leliman had shot a civilian without justification. Mwenda was aggrieved by his turn of events and moved to report the shooting incident at the Independent Policing Oversight Authority, IPOA. The complaint was taken up by IPOA, which commenced investigations into the Leliman's conduct. Around this time, lawyer Willie Kemani began to investigate the case on behalf of the International Justice Mission. IJM, an international non-governmental organization that helps vulnerable people get justice. Leliman was aggrieved by Mwenda's decision to report the incident to IPOA and felt that his job was now on stake. Thus, he began a plot to eliminate him, which in his mind would also lead to the in inevitable termination of the IPOA probe since efforts by the officers to pressure Mwenda to withdraw the complaint were futile. According to court documents, the pressure on Mwenda was relentless. For instance, he reported that on December 14, 2015, Leliman and other police officers abducted him from his home at night. The next day, Mwenda was charged with six additional counts of traffic violations, and Leliman claimed that Mwenda was violating the law while riding a motorcycle, despite the fact that the gunshot injury to his hand prevented him from doing so. Still, he did not budge. Court documents show that Mwenda was steadfast in his determination to have the shooting and his subsequent arraignment before court investigated. Unable to bully Mwenda into dropping the case, he resorted to an extreme measure murder. To set this plot in motion, Leliman dropped on three other police officers, Corporal Stephen Cheburet Morogo, Sergeant Leonard Maina Mwangi, and Sergeant Kamenju, as well as police informant Peter Ngoge Kamau. Leliman asked Ngoge with kidnapping Mwenda and on June 23, 2016, the day was scheduled to appear in court for the hearing of a case involving the shooting. Ngoge recounted that Mwenda was really pushing for Leliman's dismissal and he was being assisted by Oipoa. The fact that the case was set for hearing on June 23, 2016 and therefore they were supposed to act on that very day when Mwenda came to court. At this point, Willie Kemani was representing Mwenda and had no way of knowing the danger that was lacking. They set off to Mavoko Lokot that morning. They were abducted after they left the courtroom premises. They entered a taxi belonging to Joseph Murure, a man who would end up becoming a victim of circumstances. As they drove towards the city center from Lolongo, Mwenda, Kimani, and Mwirore were stopped by plainclothes officers and told they were under arrest. They obeyed orders to enter another vehicle that was being driven by Kamenju. Leonard Mwangi, another accused person, was in the vehicle. After being abducted, the three were detained in a container which had been converted into a holding cell at Tsukimau Chief's camp. Hours later at night, they were bundled into the boat of a car and driven uh, to their death. 
in a field in Mlolongo where they were killed by strangulation using a rope. They were strangled to death one after another, each hearing how the other person was being tortured to death. Seven years down the line, justice was finally served. Reacting to the judgment, Willie's wife, Hannah Kemani, said they had lost hope and thought it would not happen. All the same, they were grateful to God for justice. Joseph Moirure's sister, Stella, also thanked the court for the sentence and for finally getting closure. She said after close to seven years, they had found justice, although it was not easy. On July 9th, Willie Kemani was finally buried in an emotional send-off in Kikuyu, Mai Ahe. On July 11th, 2016, his client Joseph Atmundo was buried. His driver, Mwirure, who was a victim of circumstances, was also laid to rest in an emotional send-off. Willie Kemani left behind his wife, Hannah Kemani, and his two sons, and he was eulogized as an honest man, a committed man, and a hardworking person who fell in the line of duty in a senseless homicide perpetrated by someone who ought to have protected him. His death sheds light to numerous extrajudicial killings perpetrated by police officers and excessive use of power. Also, it highlights the numerous disappearances and abductions that have been blamed on the Kenyan police. No one should experience what these three went through, especially from the same person mandated to protect them. I have been your host, Lily's Rams. I thank you for watching. See you on the next, next video.